Okay, so we are now recording. Uh, today is Wednesday, November 18th, 2020. This is the Amherst, Massachusetts Conservation Commission meeting. Um, so starting off with comments from me, there are none. Um, seeing that Mr. Zomak is not here, I will assume he has no comments at this point. So Aaron, the floor is yours. Okay, so just to prepare you guys, we have a very, very business intensive meeting tonight, but I'm gonna do my best to move us, move us as quickly as I can. Um, and so, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so, um, let me see here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. This is not gonna work. Um, I don't know if you can read this or not. It's it's tough for me to even see this. Um, Could you go into like presentation mode? Um, I can try, but I'm okay. There we go. Um, so I'm thinking. Do, 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 do. Um, okay, maybe um, I'll start with Pomeroy Lane first under the request for extensions because. Um, and excuse my flipping so fast here, just to try to get us there. Um, so we get a couple of requests for continuations. One of them is for this um, house lot on Pomeroy Lane. It's immediately east of the um, poor farm property. Um, and three years ago, um, in February, there was a wetland delineation done here and there was an approval of a single family home. Mm -hmm. They've requested an extension on the order of conditions. Work has not begun there. Um, I walked the site with Mike Liu from Berkshire Design. They did go and refresh the flagging, which was really nice because um, a lot of people let it go. And um, so the flagging was refreshed. We walked the site. No work had begun, all positive things. Um, if you look at the at the plan here on the right, you'll see some orange highlighted points. Um, and those were some areas where I saw some sensitive fern, which is a fac wet species um, that is starting to creep up the hill. And these are some photos. Again, it was, you know, we were already in a, um, you know, frost situation. So, you know, I could see, and it's difficult to see in the pictures, but, you know, sensitive fern is also called bead fern because you get those, those stalks that have like the almost like bead looking um, features on them. And all around Mike Liu in this picture is, is the bead fern stems. And then the top left, the, the um, bead fern stems as well of sensitive fern. So, um, my advice to um, to Mike Liu on this was basically um, uh, for him to advise his client, you know, um, if the commission issues an extension on this, you guys should build the house soon because if you leave this property un you know, unattended, it's the wetland is moving and mm -hmm. it's going to continue to move just like it. I mean, that's why they have three year extensions on orders. So anyways, um, it's really at your discretion if you want to issue an extension, a one year extension, a two year extension, a three year extension, how you feel about that bead for an area. I didn't see any evidence of hydrology on the surface. There was no standing water. There was no leaf staining, but definitely a fact wet species was pretty dominant in those areas. What are they asking for an extension? Do um, they say a, a time frame? Or do they just say the extension? Um, they said they don't what, even what, what have anybody we... to build there yet, don't they? Right. They they do not. Um, yeah. I think they they it's not even for sale to my knowledge. Because um, how long can we can we even issue a, How long can we issue extensions? Um, under, it, under state law, you can only issue up to three years. Yeah. Um, I. So we're assuming that's what they're asking for then. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm just gonna. Sorry, I'm I'm opening it as we speak. Um, that's typically what we do extend for. Not that we need to, but typically that's what we do. 
Yeah, it's pretty standard um, unless there's a, um, and I don't even have the, the letter right in the folder, unfortunately. Sorry about That's that. Right. Usually I'm a little more, um, it's been a very, very busy couple weeks, so I apologize. Um, let me just see if I can find the letter. But typically three three years is is like the standard. He doesn't, he doesn't say in his letter, he just says an extension. I'm looking oh, at it. I, I did upload it to the, um, yeah, to the, looking, yeah, to your I'm box. Looking at it, yeah. yeah. But yeah. no, no time. He just wants to, you know, from a two, 222, 218, yeah. he wants to get an extension. Yeah. Yep. And okay. So I've got it in front of me now. This whole property was really tough. Um, and you can see how they squirreled in this road. And the worst part is that there's this little piece that goes between two pieces of wet. Right. 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 Um, and so did you see anything, any activity in that little peninsula in there? No, no, I didn't. Um, that area, I don't believe was an area where the issue was observed. It was actually um, in the pocket. Um, and I let me just pull this back up again. And I apologize. I'm jumping, jumping around because I'm like doing a, um, <laughs> a um, remote into my machine. Um, so it, there is, it, can you see my cursor? Yep. There's a field, uh, a mode field in this area. And what it looks like is that water is sort of sheeting off of that field and then coming into this little pocket right here. Mm -hmm. um, the area between the roadway was there was no indicators in there but it, this area was kind of where i think just the sheet flow from the lawn um which was just elevation wise just a little higher um than than where this site is i think it's just kind of all filtering down into that little pocket you're probably right they had to do some weird things with that road because of how everything that curve that went through there they had to redesign that and there was right it was but well, they've not, got it says they've got something in there a trench and so forth there's something that's already been put in there i mean when they they had to build something in there right over the over the wetlands i don't think no. there's anything there now there's a little bit of an existing road yeah it's a little farm road. Yeah, it's it's at this point it's more like a hiking path. Um, yeah. In some areas, it's wider than others. It's pretty overgrown. We were bushwhacking through most of it. I mean, I like what, what you're showing. Said, Aaron, the, what they're showing in the plan is up. proposed. Then, yes. Yeah. Okay. Give them a two-year. Let's split the difference. Give them a two-year extension. Tell them to hurry up. Yeah, I think. I mean, that's right, right about kind of in the ballpark of what I was thinking, Fletcher. I think that's a fair. Um, compromise and I mean I would even say beyond that if we you know if if this expands any further that there won't be any more extensions to kind of you know give them some incentive to either move along or do something else with it and it might also be helpful I mean obviously Mike Lou's going to know but you know what would happen if nothing happens in two years basically it's a new um, filing in front of us right but right just so that that's clear to them no. Mm -hmm. So yeah, two years sounds fine by me. So we would just need an extension to that effect. Um, and it's for, um, sorry, a motion. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> need a motion to that we effect. All know what you're saying. Um, for DEP number 89-635. Uh, I make a motion to extend DEP file number 89-635. Yep. Second. Okay, so looking for a voice vote. So Anna, Aye. was there a time? Was you put the time in there, didn't you? Yeah, two years. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I for me. So we are good there. Wonderful. Uh, so I saw that Dave just joined, and so. Um, Dave, do you have any updates that you'd like to give tonight? So we have about 15 minutes before our first hearing. There's a new button I can ask to unmute. I don't know what that means. 
<laughs> he I may have know. taken away the rat for a minute. Um, while we're waiting for Dave, I could jump to another um, probably fairly straightforward um, other business item. I'm going to jump around a little for ones that are going to be less controversial to deal with uh, that we can move fairly quickly on. Um, yeah, we have a couple beefy ones. So yeah, we do. <clears throat> um, So um, we received a, I'll just jump into this. We re received a request for certificate of compliance from the common school. And um, I went out and walked the site with Mike Liu um, as well. And um, I gave them authorization to um, remove their erosion controls. Um, they, um, the site was pretty stable. I mean, 90%, 95% stable. There was just this one, um, and let me see if I can share this. View. Um, there was just this one area that, um, it's kind of like a high traffic area coming down off this ramp. Um, and I asked them to spread some wood chips there. So they're supposed to be doing that. Um, but other than that, the site is, is um, very well stabilized. I do have pictures that I, I took throughout the site. I'd be happy to flip through them if you guys want to look at them. Um, the only remaining thing that is left uncompleted on this project is the plantings in the rain garden. And it's really not a great time of year to be planting herbaceous species. Um, so they were planning to do, do that in the spring and they were also planning to do it as sort of like a school project. Um, but the, the rain garden looks great. It's very stable. It's got stone in it. Um, it's stabilized with, um, with uh, mm -hmm. grasses at this point. Um, I wouldn't have any um, objection to the board issuing a certificate of compliance. Um, I think it would just be another one to get off of our off of our monitoring plate at this point. Yeah, and the pictures look good, so those yeah, are the ones I have yep. as well. So, yep, I am fine. Does anybody else have, want to see the pictures? Or anybody have any questions on this one? I've looked at the pictures. They there look good. Okay. Um, so then we'll be looking for a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for Common School. I moved. So moved. A, a, I'm going to say the whole thing. I moved okay. to issue a uh, certificate of compliance for the Common School. Second. Thanks, Larry. Thank, thank you. So, Anna? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Larry? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. And I for me as well. So looks like Dave is still on mute. So um, I don't know if you're saying te technical difficulties or what's going on there. But so why don't we just keep on moving here? Okay, sounds good. Um, so this is um, Amherst Hills projects. Um, we did get two requests for certificates of compliance. Um, well, actually, we got let me rephrase this. We got three requests for certificates of compliance for properties on the hills. Um, I'd like to just start with these because they're, I think, the easiest and most straightforward of the bunch. Um, 108 Linden Ridge Road, 111 Linden Ridge Road. Both of these lots are located outside of Conservation Commission jurisdiction. They're not even within buffer zone. They're actually completely within upland. Um, the lots are stable and work is complete on them. I walked them and took photos. Happy to share those if you want to look at them. Um, we, uh, there was a closing at 108 Linden Ridge and um, there was uh, some um, concern from the seller because the, they didn't have a certificate of compliance and it was, it became an issue. So I, I contacted town council 
and with town council guidance basically issued a letter to the seller stating that the the 108 Linden Ridge is outside of CONCOM jurisdiction and that was about the best that he said I could do without being in a public meeting um, to have you guys approve it but both of these um, certificates of compliance are um, as far as I'm concerned they're um, ready to issue. I guess I'm con um, confused, Aaron. Why is there, why are there even open files on these? These are for the, the subdivision as a whole. Okay. So, um, and, and the next one that we'll look at is actually one that was, that was specifically for a house. So it was house specific construction, but okay. these are actually for the um, infrastructure for the, the roadway and stuff. It's just tied to the lots. So it's kind of more of a, um, technicality, really. Okay. That all sounds good to me. Anybody else have any questions on this? I assume we need separate motions for these? I would recommend it. Okay. So looking for a motion for certificate of compliance for 108 Linden. I'll make a motion to, for certificate of compliance for 108 Linden Road. Second. Um, and I'm sorry, I misstated. So it's Linden Ridge Road. I don't know if we have a Linden Road. Linden but. Ridge. We all, I got it. Second. Excellent. So Fletcher, how do you vote? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Larry? Aye. Anna? Aye. And aye for me as well. So looking for a motion for 111 Linden Ridge. Uh, all right. I move we issue a certificate of compliance for 111 Linden Ridge Road. Second. Anna? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Larry? Aye. Fletcher. Aye. And aye for me as well. All right, we're cruising. Awesome. Well, as long as we're on um, Amherst Hills and we have a few minutes, we can talk about this one. Um, so 115 Concord Way is a little different. Um, and so the reason for that is because there's a specific um, Specifically, there is a an order of conditions for construction of the house. Um, so if you look at the plan, the one that's in the center of the screen is the approved plan for the house footprint. Um, and if you look at the one on the right, that is the basically as built plan that I was provided for it. Um, <clears throat> the as built plan is is fairly accurate. The only exceptions I would make are outlined in red, which are difficult to see, but basically I just hand drew on these little um, items, which are that the house, see how there's a turnaround in the driveway? Um, the house actually extends to the extent of that turnaround. I'm not sure that that's a huge deal because if you look at the footprint of the house, I think that it includes that, although it's a little bit closer to the 50 foot buffer, but I think that's splitting hairs. Um, the items that I noticed that kind of jumped out at me the most on this were the deck. The deck is very close to the 50 foot, if not right on the 50 foot. And there's also a underground storage tank, a gas tank that, huh, okay. I put pictures in here, I'm not sure why. Oh, there they are, they're just in the wrong order. Um, so you can see that these are the photos of the house. So you can, I just wanted you to visually see the house extends as far back as the turnaround in the driveway. Um, and then there's deck on the back and then top left, you can see there's a little red arrow pointing down. That's an underground storage tank. I believe it's a gas, gas storage tank, um, which weren't included on the original plans. And so uh, just a, a slight deviation, shall we say, from the order of conditions that was approved. Is that the, an underground tank gasoline? Um, or I is it propane? I believe it's propane. Okay. I believe so. Um, the site was otherwise stable. It's a little disconcerting that they're putting a tank that close to the wetlands, though. Much worse if it was gasoline. What is it? What did you say what the tank was for again? Apparently, she thinks it's propane. 
Yeah, probably for the yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what, it doesn't make sense to put gasoline tank up there, he plays. So, but it's in the. I can't see quite. The tank's in the buffer. It's at. It looks like it's right on the fifty, right, Aaron? Yeah. So if you, so I I estimated. I estimated that the extent of the deck was approximately right on, right at the 50 foot. But if you look at the photo, you see that back of the deck, um, it's, it's tough to tell, but you know, it, to me, it looks like the tank is a little further closer in, um, not the greatest location from a wetland standpoint. Um, but. So what do you, what do we, what are options? I mean, certificate and appliance is done. Clearly that back, that backyard's all fill. Right. I mean. Yeah. I mean, to be honest at know. this, at this point in time, there's, there's basically two choices. Um, you issue the certificate of compliance or you don't. Um, if you don't issue it um, and I, um, I can double check if the if it's still valid. Sorry, I'm in the middle of organizing my basement because I just moved and I tried to do the background, but it didn't work. <laughs> so forgive my mess in the back here. Um, no one's judging. <laughs> I know, but it's like nobody needs to see that mess. Um, the basement. It was issued 1017. So it would have expired in October. Um, the only thing that we could have really required was that they dig it up and move it out. Um, I mean, the question is really if they had come forward with this as a proposal initially, would the board have approved it? And, um, you know, I think we, it's really, at, it's really at the board's discretion how you want to respond. Um, one thing you could say is is to notify Mr. Burkeum in writing that that can't happen again um, on, you know, and if if tanks are being installed that they need to be installed outside of CONCOM jurisdiction or that somebody needs to come before the board for a um, a uh, amendment to the order of conditions in order to proposed placement of those tanks. Where is the fill location for that tank? Is it right there where the tank is? Do they have to go out there all the time with the big propane trucks and fill it from there or where? Where do they fill from? That's a great question, Larry. I'm I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Um, I mean, if, if they were going to be going there, out there all the time, it might be more questionable. Yeah, so Nicole Burkeum, who's um, Ron Burkeum's attorney, is, is actually... Um, an attendee and she's raising her hand so if it's okay maybe we should make her a panelist so that she can answer to that she's at least allowed to speak at this point so okay yep. All right. so sh nicole you should be um you should be there now and there's another burkeum on the list as well oh that's probably ron let me see i'll add him as well So Nicole and Ron, you are both panelists at this point and you can speak. Um, Nicole, we can't hear you. So I don't know. And Ron would need to unmute himself. I'm just gonna try to unmute Ron, but. That's not working tonight. So, but yeah, they're both unmuted now. Okay. Oh, oh yes. yes. Okay, great. The propane tank um, is filled up maybe once a year and it's filled up from the driveway. There's a long hose. But there's, they're still going out to the where the tank is. They do, but it's maybe once a year. Okay. So What's the propane for? Is it for home heating or is it? Correct. All Berkeley homes are heated with a propane tank. Correct. And so is the person who is asking for the certificate, are they the developer or are they the homeowner? Because- uh, I mean, Burkeum Construction is the developer. 
He's okay. asking for the certificate of compliance, correct. Okay, so that's different than the homeowner because I don't think the homeowner is gonna be putting in any more tanks, but the developer, yeah. That was, you know, I don't know if my dad will be able to unmute himself to talk, but I'm assuming that that's, you know, where the tank was approved to go prior to him even putting it in to avoid the risk of having to move it. And I know it has to be a certain amount of feet from the home. So I think the options of where you can put a propane tank are quite limited, especially mm -hmm. with the size of the lot. So, and I know the septic systems in the front yard, so there's really no other place to put it, I believe. Yeah, and even if we wanted to move it, I would yeah. probably moving at this point might do more damage than leaving it in situ, so. Probably. Um, so it's more of an issue for me sort of moving forward because it doesn't seem like it was on the original plans. So that's yes. problematic to us. Well, we can ensure that they're correctly noted on the plans moving forward. Yeah, it's gonna probably be important because they weren't on the original plan. Is that correct when it came from the Conservation Commission? No. Right, so that's kind of a, but you guys obviously, but you guys say you put all your homes of propane tanks. I'm sorry, propane, heat, all your homes are propane. Oh, just, okay. okay, just being clear, okay. So, I mean, if the board feels comfortable, you know, putting that in writing, then I would say, you know, um, you, you, the option would be if you, if you feel comfortable moving forward with requesting that, then to issue the certificate of compliance, but maybe include a correspondence that, requests that in the future, any tanks that are placed, um, and I would say decks, decks as well, decks or tanks that are placed beyond the house footprint that was approved in the order of conditions, that those be um, approved by the Conservation Commission. Uh, I prefer before, before, I'd say required rather than just requested, but. Required, yep. Before. That is what the, what the bylaws do say. Mm -hmm. uh, just to be clear. Um, yeah. And yeah, I also appreciate what you're saying, Nicole. There may not have been a better option. So um, it may have, yeah. may have had to have happened, but it would have been good to at least have discussion and at least thought through if there were some other options. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and so are there other properties that you guys are working on in the area that may potentially have similar issues? Um, I don't believe so. I believe that the lots that abutted wetlands are sold or already built on. Um, there's other lots that he will build on in the future, but I don't believe those abut wetlands. It's all up and down Linden Ridge. Um, Aaron, I think you probably saw all the lots when you went to 108 Linden Ridge. They're all it did. The yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not all that excited. Well, yeah, it, it's not nice where it is right now. Um, it, that makes me uncomfortable having something like that that close to a wetland. Um, but I don't feel like there's much that we can do that will help rectify the situation at this point. Again, I think it just, it'd make things worse um, taking it out at this point. But I mean, so other commissioners have different feelings or comments? No. No, I, I feel fine, but you know, thanks. I'm glad you guys are here. It looks like um, Burkum Senior is taking a picture of us. Oh, um. I think he's trying to get on. <laughs> <laughs> Those are our um, parents trying to get on. Yeah. Um, but I think, Karen, uh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I think moving forward, I, th I, I just agree with what Aaron and uh, Brett said. Okay. Well, does somebody want to um, make a motion? Yeah, and so we're looking for a certificate of compliance and a letter requiring um, prior notice for all future uh, endeavors that are potentially happening within wetlands boundaries or with, within wetlands jurisdiction. Yeah, I make a motion to re uh, for uh, request for a certificate of compliance as long as you guys are making sure we move forward specifically with uh, propane tanks and backyards or anything near a wetland. Second. Okay, Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Larry. Aye. 
and I for me as well. So, okay, so I think we are good with this one. So thank you, Nicole. Um, I don't know if Ron was ever able to hear us, but thank you, Ron, as well. Okay, yeah, and, thank you and, very much. And Nicole, the other two were approved before. I don't know if you- Yeah, I was on. Okay, so. okay. Great. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you. So we'll move you back to non-panelists. So attendee, I guess is the word. Okay, so they are back as attendees. And so I have 735. So Aaron, should we move into our first agenda item? Yes, yep. Um, okay, I think I saw Mickey was here. Yes, he uh, is. Yep. I think Niels as well. Oh, I see him there as well, okay. So we'll move them to panelists. And so is there anybody else here? So this is gonna be our 7.30 agenda item, a notice of intent to continuation for dredging at the UMass pond. If there is anybody else here, here for that, you can just raise your hand. Okay, so Mickey should be coming on. I think I clicked it, right? Okay, there we go. Um, so Mickey or Niels, I don't know if one of you would like to start and give us an update on where we are and if you're ready to move forward at this point. Uh, yeah, why don't, why don't I start and uh, Niels will jump in as, as needed. Um, oh, look, Aaron has a little kid. That's great. Um, hey, um, thanks all um, for uh, continuing uh, this hearing for many months. Um, so we filed uh, a notice of intent to dredge the campus pond. Um, earlier this year, uh, we concurrently filed it as a water quality cert and DEP asked us to have uh, the wetland hearings continued until DEP Boston can look at the soil management dredge plan. Um, there's one individual, Derek Standish, who does this work for the entire state. Uh, he's very slow. Um, but they, we finally rose to the top of the pile. Uh, and he, in the end of the day, um, had no changes in the plan. Uh, he asked uh, for two things, that we do additional sediment sampling um, for looking for lead concentrations in the pond. And he asked that the dredge spoil piles be placed on a plastic liner, but no other changes. So um, DEP put us on hold and put us back uh, to you. Um, MEPA has issued a certificate uh, uh, from the Secretary of Environmental Affairs for, for the pond work that was issued on September 25th. And Aaron, you should have gotten a copy of that certificate. And if you don't have one, I'll, I'll send it over to you. Um, the Army Corps is reviewing it. Um, they, um, the Army Corps and Mass Historical Commission kind of work hand in hand and they go back and forth. And at this point, so everybody's reviewed the project and now they've said, okay, now we want the orders of conditions. So um, that's why we asked you to reopen the hearing. Um, when we last presented the hearing, um, the commission had indicated you wanted to do a site walk. So I, I guess what I'm saying tonight is um, we're restarting this process. Um, again, UMass is trying to redredge the pond. It's about 6,500 cubic yards of material. It'll all get put on the east lawn to dewater and then disposed off site. Um, so um, I don't think we need to make any decisions tonight. Um, I'm just asking, I guess, two things. One is um, would the commission like to go visit the pond and see for yourself what the different aspects of the dredging plan are? Um, and probably uh, ask you to continue this to the next hearing to have a more in-depth discussion about uh, what you've seen out on the site visit. But none, none, of the, none of the plans have changed, I guess, is, is the bottom line in going through DEP, Water Quality, the Army Corps, uh, all the other agencies. Uh, like I said, there, the two changes are really that we just do additional sampling for lead and that we uh, the soil that's taken out of the pond needs to be put on a poly liner. Mickey, is the location of the um, dredged material changing? Or that's staying exactly the same, just going on a liner? It stays okay. exactly. Yeah, there's three separate cells to allow yep. the material to dewater. Yeah. Okay. 
the the only thing I would add uh, to what Mickey was saying is that um, uh, the Mass Historical Commission has requested that we renew our memorandum of agreement that we entered into with the Army Corps of Engineers when we rebuilt the dike um, uh, a number of years ago, um, and you know which uh, talked a lot about pond management. Uh, water levels, uh, plants that are allowed to be, uh, it had a whole plant list as part of it and all that stuff. And uh, UMass is fine with, uh, uh, cause that was basically set to expire or has it expired? It was five, good for five years. And I know it was right, right around now was when it would be expiring. So uh, we, we're happy to uh, re-enter into that uh, memorandum of, of agreement with the uh, Army Corps. It, just so you know, the um, so the campus pond and the surrounding area is listed uh, by the Mass Historical Commission as a as an historic landscape. So when the university rebuilt the dike and built the integrative uh, classroom building, um, they ended up having a memo memorandum of understanding on planting plans, and the, you know the commission uh, we talked about revegetating the north end of the pond. That was all according to like a prescribed agreement. Uh, so what the Army Corps and Mass Historical Commission are saying is let's renew that for the dredging as well. Okay. So Aaron, do you have anything that you wanted to add before we open it up? No, um, I guess I one question is, um, so we only have one meeting in December thus far, um, the 9th of December, and then which is only um, a couple weeks away right now. Um, and then beyond that, we have January 13th. And um, I'm just not sure that in the next three weeks, you know, you guys are going to have much more movement. So I'm almost wondering if it'd be better to uh, postpone until the first meeting in January. Yeah, I, I guess that um, the movement is, is now, um, I guess I'm asking the commission to uh, finish their review uh, and ultimately issue uh, order of conditions. And that's really what we're waiting for. And I, and I think, um, for those of you who are not familiar with the pond, it would be good to show you the pond and show you the outlet structure and show you the inlet structure, just so you understand um, the drainage of the pond and what's proposed. Um, but you know, if we're able to, ha again, I, I would like you know to show those of you who are interested that surrounding, just so you have a better understanding of the drainage and hydrology, um, and. If you know, you're able to put us on a, a December 9th meeting, you know, having a, a site walk, that'd be great. If you can't okay. do it, we'll, we'll postpone it till December, uh, till January. Uh, if, if you guys would be ready to have us issue an order of conditions on the 9th, then I'm completely fine with that. I just wanted to make sure you're, you have everything you need um, in time for that. Yeah, I, I think what would happen is um, we, we delay this for like over six months to let all the other agencies review the project and now now we're in a circular firing squad so we've got the comments back they're very minor and um now they're saying well now we need the orders of condition so we're, we've come back to you make you know okay. assured that the plan's not going to change now so um because this is such a complex project um with so many parties involved um what i would like to do is just spend some time drafting an order in advance so that I can have some conditions and you know I'll definitely come up with some sort of boilerplates but um, Mickey or Niels if you guys have any suggested conditions that you think would kind of make things a little smoother for construction and implementation um, because obviously you're going to have, there's going to be so many players involved in this. There's going to be pre-construction meetings. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to need to see and follow these documents. And so just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So if you have any conditions that you think need to be included prior to the ninth, feel free to send those along to me and I'll also right. continue. I'll get some draft ready. 
Thanks. Appreciate the opportunity to do that. Yeah, and and I'll, Aaron. Um, I don't know if you and the commission have have seen the uh, certificate from the state, but um, you know, we talked about um, having um, like a little wildlife pool, like the so the pond isn't drained yeah. 100%. Uh, yep. We've committed to having wildlife monitors. There's a bunch of things that mm -hmm. that are committed to that. Uh, I think you're right. We just need to consolidate and put in one place. Mm -hmm. One question I have, and um, I apologize, it's been a while since I've looked at this. Um, is there going to be any revegetation or anything that happens afterwards? Is that already in the plan? Yeah, there's very little re vegetation disturbance. Right? Uh, the, uh, there, there, there's an access point that they're going to use, which is in a little area of riprap. And then uh, there's one other area of the bank about 20 feet wide that they'll enter. That's where the uh, hydro rake has been coming in. And those two areas are proposed to be revegetated. But other than that, um, there's no disturbance of vegetation. It's just sediment mm -hmm. removal. Yeah, I mean, is the hydrology going to get changed at all? I mean, around the edges, obviously, the whole things can get deeper. But I don't know if there's opportunities for more wetlands plants or anything like that, that you guys are thinking of? Uh, we're, we're going to leave all the plants along the edge. So the university's slowly been working their way around the pond, restoring the banks mm -hmm. and revegetating it. The idea is not to disturb that. Okay. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, if you guys are ready, I think that'd be great to get this moving from our end. So does anybody else have any questions? Does anybody from the public have any questions on this one? Um, I'm very familiar with the pond. I think probably a lot of people are, but it's always nice to get back out there with when we're looking at, you know, specific treatments that are going to happen as well. So, Yeah, and Mickey, um, just so that for planning of site visits, it seems as though this semester it's easier for a lot of people to meet before 9 a.m., like so like between 7 and 8.30 um, to do site walk or um, weekends, evenings, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, folks, but um, it sounds like those are kind of the, the best times to get eyes and ears of the commission out on the site. Uh, evenings are no longer good because it gets dark so early. But. Right, yeah. right, yep. But early morning works fine for from my standpoint. I have, we're, we're, flexible. Have to be we're, we're both in town, so whatever works for the majority of the commission members. And all the students are gonna be gone come Friday, so. What what few students there are on campus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm almost thinking, um, Mickey and Niels, if you want to throw out like three or four dates with morning hours that would work for you, and then I can send them to the board, and then we can just nail something down. Okay. Yeah, I know for me personally, um, so just checking with the other um, commissioners, I mean, so what does early morning work How's that? I mean, like, so 7.30 would work well for me. Uh, I don't know about other people. That's really good for me. Pre-work pre is, is ideal. And work is 8.30. Okay. So, Aaron, do you want me to email you some dates that were available? Yeah, like for a 7.30 time meeting. Um, I'm not, I've already been to the site. I've reviewed the plans with, with, you know, um, your your folks at S, um, SWCA and um, and I felt very comfortable with the plans. Then I think the the revisions really kind of are what I haven't had a chance to to look at in the you know revised documents. But um, but yeah, just to give give them a brief overview um, so that there's a couple commissioners on the ground, I think would be great. Okay. I'll throw some dates after Thanksgiving. So we'll yeah, I, I was just going to suggest after after next week's Thanksgiving. So first week of December is probably what we're talking about. Okay, we'll do. Sounds good. So okay. um, I would just suggest a seven thirty time slot on November or um December 9th for a continuation. If somebody wants to move that. So first, I just want to see: is there any more comments oh, or yeah. anything? No. Oh, okay. So then as Aaron was saying, we're looking for a, a motion. <laughs> I move for a continuous, a continuation of this till December 9th at 7.30. 
Second. Leroy? Aye. Anna? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Larry? Aye. And I. So we are good to go. So thank you, Mickey, and thank you, Niels. We'll see you on the ninth. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Um, so we have 750, so we're fine to move on to our next, which is a, another continuation. This is a notice of intent from BSC Group with Eversource. So um, so for those people who are here for this one, if you can raise your hand. So I see Melissa. Okay, so Melissa, you should be turning into a panelist here. Uh, so looks like Aaron already got Jonathan. Okay, so um, I don't know if, John, if Melissa, I assume you're gonna, if you wanna kick us off at this point. Yeah, sure. Um, Aaron, I don't know if you wanna pull up the um, updated information I sent you, but we are continuing from the previous hearing for um, the access road that we're proposing to put at the Podic substation. Um, in terms of that, the uh, Mark Stinson uh, requested, rightfully so, some uh, hydrologic connection under the road um, to uh, make sure we don't sever the wetland that's in the corner of the substation. Uh, I think I had mentioned that I thought, you know, we should just put some sort of larger stone or something like that. But I talked to my engineer and, you know, if there is a, you know, flood, flooded waters or high water levels here, which this area is very dry, you know, the stone and the filter fabric that you would need to apply would probably get more clogged than something like a small culvert. So we went with um, just putting in a small culvert um, in this location we're proposing here, which would be kind of closer to where the where the wetland would be as opposed to going, making it flow more off site. So I wanted to make sure it stays all on site. Um, and uh, so this is kind of what it is. It's just a small little, um, I, I can't, let me look on my plan. I can't read that. Um, yeah, I apologize that for whatever reason, the, the um, on my bigger screen image quality is not great tonight. And I can open the plan as well if need be. Yeah, it's an 18 inch um, HDPE pipe is all we're proposing to put there. Um, match invert it with the existing ground with it about a six inch embedment. Um, and um, the flared in, you know, pretty basic, just a small little pipe culvert, um, just to make sure there's a, a connection there should there be a large storm or some sort of ponding of water here, which is, which is, I have not seen too often back there. Is there also stone proposed underneath the access road as well? Well, the, I mean, the, the whole road is going to be stone. So yeah, it will be um, backfilled with stone. And like other than the surface roadway, will the the stone underneath the surface be larger um, diameter stone as opposed to just the surfacing? I think that's usually how they build their access roads, yeah. Aaron. So I thought so they too. Usually, yeah, they usually put a, a the smaller stone and then um, kind of level it off so it's stabilized. Um, right. You, call it, you know, pack it down, kind of. So yeah, almost like a rip, like a rip wrap. And then with like a um, a layer of like stone on top of that for the roadway itself. Yeah. And is Melissa, is there a maintenance plan for the culvert? Um, I mean, just like everything at the substation, every, everything needs to be maintained. But I did not prepare a, a maintenance plan uh, for this. I, I can't imagine it's it's going to need too much maintenance. I really don't think it's going to get too much waters in it. <laughs> um, but I mean, we can, you know, ensure just like any stormwater um, infrastructure requires, you know, maintenance. Yep, we can just add that to the conditions. So. Yeah, you could do that too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would just suggest annual cleaning at the inlet and outlet. Um, and making sure that the pipe is functional. 
That's fine. Okay. So this seems pretty straightforward. Um, just some additional details. So that's good. Yeah. Um, and then the other part was um, the access to the mitigation site, which I think Aaron, you had had those photos too, or that plan too. Um, and we added that in. There will need to be a little bit of matting. Um, there it is. Uh, a little bit of matting once we get past the opera house, I think it's called, or the whatever that building is that's right at the beginning. Um, and then we can utilize the existing road. And then because it's an agricultural field, we want to protect the field. So we'll mat in to the field <clears throat> and uh, and then to, to make sure we uh, can construct the, the mitigation site without impacting the uh, areas outside of our proposed mitigation site, we'll mat that area. Is there going to be a um, stockpiling area or how is that going to be handled? I mean, they'll probably use the existing areas until they have everything um, cont graded, contained, and then um, maybe we can put down a little extra mats or use the existing matting that we have, and then they can just, we'll have to, um, we'll probably have to take it off site. Yeah, I would, I would suggest um, either mats for the, for the, um, um, stockpile or that it just be taken away because I feel like the stockpile it, anywhere other than the construction area is going to create a big mess in that field as well. Yeah, but eventually it's got to be taken away. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It will be. Okay. And it looks like you guys have the, um, the easement on there now. So it looks like there's no yeah. issue. So. <laughs> exactly. Okay, that's great. And can you also just remind us, Melissa, what's happening with the beaver issue out there? Well, as part of this, um, we'll remove we um, we will remove the beaver dam. Uh, we have contacted um, Jonathan. Do you remember the name of the company? We've contacted a company that EverSource uses and has a contract with. And um, once we get approval for this, and probably out of the winter season. Um, we will remove that. We'll get that dam removed. Okay. But and I, don't, I don't think they can do it right now. I, they have a specific period when they can do it and when they can't just for the, the beaver trapping, um, things like that. And I don't, I think we might be out of that season. Okay. The, the dam removal does include beaver, the trapping of the beavers, right? Melissa? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think you have to, or they're just going to come right back. Right. I mean, they might actually come back anyways, but this will at least give you some time. Right. Yeah, I believe it's Integrated Wildlife Services. Thank Melissa. you, John. <laughs> and uh, I, the dam removal, it's more of a breach, correct? They'll, they'll sort of take it down in some areas. They'll have to do, they'll start with the breach and go slowly, but I think we talked about doing a little bit more significant than that. So you okay. and I could talk about that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think just from that standpoint, like, as, and, and we can talk more offline about this, but um, I think the town's definitely going to want to be um, sort of in the loop as far as what's being proposed with the dam removal itself, just because we would like to do it in an incremental way. And I know they may need to do it in a specific way in order to target the beavers, but um you know, the town would definitely like to do it in a, in a slow, um, you know, slow letdown fashion as opposed to just, yeah. you know, ripping it out and having it flood downstream or something. Well, absolutely. I think they, I think they acknowledge that. And as Jonathan mentioned, you'd have to breach it first and let it kind of slowly go down and then you can manage it from there, how much further you go and how fast you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like uh, all the outstanding issues have been addressed. Is there anything else that you see, Aaron? Um, no, I mean, I, I'm pretty comfortable with what's proposed. Um, I, 
I don't have a big list of conditions prepared for this. Um, I would just say um, that, you know, that the maintenance issue of the pipe um, at the substation would be an important thing to include annual maintenance to make sure it's functioning and to clean the inlet and outlet. And then um, that the, you know, the town wants to be um, informed every step of the way with the beaver removal and, and um, per particularly less so with the beaver trapping, more so with the um, um, let down of the, the water levels with the beaver dam removal. So however we, I can, you know, wordsmith some language, but the, you know, the town definitely is going to want to um, 100% be involved knowing what's happening and when, like dates certain and what the plan is and stuff. Um, like myself and Dave should definitely be copied on no notices of when that's happening since it's happening on town land. Well, yeah, and, and you definitely will because of that and because we have to get a, we have to get your approval during the Board of Health uh, permit for any trapping of the beavers. Um, and I am assuming for the breaching of the dam as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but but even before that, we'll let you know that and talk to you about that. Yeah, and like for, I know we had talked at the last um, meeting about having some kind of signage um, mm -hmm. to install at the um, at the uh, conservation area, like an educational kind of, this is what's happening here. We're creating a wetland um, and this is a, a, you know, a wetland mitigation project and to let people know that, <laughs> you know, um, that it's a, it's a ecologically friendly project that's taking place on conservation land. Um, and and maybe I don't know Melissa is that something that we could um, wordsmith together? Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose that we could just work offline on that and do it anyways. I don't know if it, it can it be a condition of a uh, order of conditions. I don't know, but I mean, it is for the mitigation. So, I mean, I don't have we don't have a problem with it. So. Yeah, and um, I'm not talking anything uh, too crazy, more or yeah. less just like something under the DEP file number that's, uh, this is a, you know, a project, a wetland creation project in association with the town of Amherst and for more information, call a number or something like something yeah. very basic so that people can. Um, right, and, and Eversource and, and Jonathan can speak to this, but I'm sure Eversource is gonna, would love to have their name on it. You know, that I think you and I talked about that too. So I, yeah. I, I don't think they have a problem with that or, um, um, and that's fine. So we can work on that one or you can just say a educational sign will be prepared and then you and I to be coordinated with the, with the town with, with the conservation commission or well and i think we're i think we're talking about two different things here just to be oh, okay. clear one would be during construction just to let people know oh okay you know just just very kind of rudimentary let people know um that it's a you know wetland creation project and then okay. once it's constructed yeah i think putting an educational sign of some sort that you know we could work on together would be would be a great thing. I'm not sure that that's something we need to condition unless okay, that's what we I, want that's to. What if we want to include it as a condition, then that's that's great. Um, but um, yeah, I think that I think that would be great for educational purposes to include. Yeah. So I mean, I think that in the conditions we should just have something about a temporary sign signage. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think we'll be good with that. And. Um, as far as the road coming into Podic, like from Route 116 into the conservation area, if that road gets chewed up or damaged, I'm assuming that they'll kind of um, smooth that out once the construction is completed. Yeah, all, all of those roads, no matter where what's being used, will be returned to pre-construction condition. In terms of, you know, rutting during construction may look like you know, all messy and, and stuff, but then they are, they will, and we will tell them, we will recommend to them that they need to fix all of that and repair any ruts and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Because okay. it could happen if it gets muddy out there. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I can, I can re- rerun through some of these, but in addition to sort of the specific ones that we're talking about, I definitely like to include some just boilerplate conditions that we would include under state and local, like as far as posting a DEP file number, having a pre-construction meeting, um, sort of those basic ones. And the only ones that would be um, a slight variation from a typical order of conditions would just be the long-term monitoring of the um, of the wetland because in this case I think the town is sort of taking it taking onus of the wetland upon itself as far as um, monitoring it so it will more or less just be for construction of it um, written in into the boilerplate as well as like the other standard boilerplate conditions. Okay, um, so let's see, are there, do other commissioners have any questions or comments? Uh, I'm not a commissioner, but I, I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to um, talk about the culvert and the condition for that for a second before we uh-huh. move on, if that's okay. Um, in terms of the maintenance, I mean, as I mentioned, the they do regular routine maintenance out there for the road and, and for any, um, you know, because they definitely don't want the flood, the, the substation to flood. Um, I don't know if there's any way we could maybe not require it to be every year, but I don't know if there's any way we could say routine inspections should be conducted to ensure the culvert and the inlet and the outlets are, you know, maintained instead of saying every year it has to be inspected. I don't, I don't know, just to maybe, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I leave that up to you guys, but I didn't know if there's any way that could be just. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that we have like a maintenance log on it or anything okay. like that. Like, I'm not saying that I, I'm going to be stopping out there saying, like, I want to see your maintenance, your annual maintenance log of when you clean this and who did it, you know, like, I'm, this is, this is more so really for, you know, the long term viability of the wetland and also the stability of the driveway itself. So, okay. And annual doesn't seem like that big of an onus. Okay. So, okay. Um, so again, uh, any other commissioners have any comments or questions? Is there anybody from the public? Uh, you can just use that little feature on Zoom to raise your hand. Okay, so I'm not seeing any. Um, so Aaron, did you want to put up the order of conditions on the screen? Did you want to read those out loud and we can have somebody, you know, just parrot them or you know just say yeah things. yeah I think I'm I've been just kind of jotting them down here I don't have them on the screen but um I will verbally run through them so so first and foremost I would include the um standard boilerplate conditions under that we use under state law and our local bylaw with the exception of the long-term man um long-term maintenance and monitoring of the replication area that the town wants to be included um, and informed of all steps related to the um, beaver dam removal. Um, Temporary signage should be provided um, for the project to alert people and provide a contact number for the project. Um, That the road will be um, returned to a stable condition upon completion of the project. I believe that's all the conditions that I had jotted down. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Aaron. So, Larry, you want to work your magic on that one? How about so moved? <laughs> that's the magic I was looking for. <laughs> Second. Okay, so Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I for me as well. That made me miss Jen. 
you know, she, she would have done the whole laundry list right off. <laughs> off the top of her head without any yeah, notes. Not writing down for anything. She just be like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> well, she didn't do that tonight with a child on her lap. So yep, absolutely. <laughs> One hand tied behind her back. Yeah. So thank you very much, Melissa. So thank I think you. we're in Jonathan. So I think we're pretty much closed on this. Obviously, Aaron will be back in touch with the details. <coughs> Thanks. This is this is going to be great. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, it's a cool project, guys. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for working with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see what happens out there. So yeah, good luck Definitely. with. I get. I guess it's us. So good luck to all of us with the beavers. Yeah. <laughs> good luck with all of us. <laughs> all right. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. See ya. Too. Bye bye. I'll be in touch, Aaron. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye bye. Able to attend. Okay, so I think we are back with just commissioners as panel members. Okay, so 810, so we are good to move on to our 740, which is another continuation of a notice of intent. And this is from Conservation Works and Kestrel Trust for um, the same area. So for Potic, Con Potic Con Conservation Area and Catherine Cole. So I thought I saw Pete on here before. Yeah, there he is. Pete is now a panelist. And oh, now we can see Dave. So we can see you now, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I was having some technical difficulties earlier, but I could hear you and now now I can see you and, and hear you. So yeah, Zoom's doing something a little different tonight, I think. So I know they did some updates on it. Same with teams. So seem to make things better, do they? Yeah. So Okay, so I thought I saw Pete. So Pete should be a panelist. And yeah, so Pete, you should be able to, we should be able to hear you now. And so if you want to go okay. on where you were at. Sure, and, uh, and Dave will have more to add, but um, as you may remember from the previous session, what we're proposing is actually only on the Catherine Cole area, uh, the Podic part that was put into the original application has been deleted. So we're asking for approval for 20, 200, 220 linear feet of bog bridging in three sections, 80, 90, and 50 feet long on basically what is disturbed ground that's been pretty well trampled. And uh, the, the disturbed uh, areas that um, will no longer be walked on after the bog bridging is in, uh, I'll tell you what Hadley suggested is that we keep an eye on them for a year and see if they green up well, and then if not, we can reseed them. Uh, Hadley met last week and approved the uh, wooded parts of the bog bridging that, that are going to be in Hadley. So those will be on partly on Podic and partly on Catherine Cole and partly on Food Bank. But this proposal is only for Catherine Cole. Uh, so what, what Hadley did, just so you know, is to approve the uh, wooded parts of the uh, bog bridging. And then for the field part that uh, is different in, in that it um, would be, the bog bridging would go on existing vegetation that hasn't yet been trampled. But they agreed that what we need is to keep people confined, walkers confined to uh, a given route so that no unnecessary damage is done. And what they asked for was a small replication area totaling 56 square feet, which is you know about 10 by six. So we're going to outline that and present that, but for the wooded part, they did not ask for replication. And Pete, uh, can you just remind me, I, I, I... For the part that's on Amherst land, that's all wooded though, I believe. I think the- That's all wooded, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's, I don't know where that boundary is. I was out there recently, but I can't quite tell. Yeah, it, it, it is marked with flagging and it's, uh, it's several hundred yards out west of that uh, bridge across the stream. Okay. Um, Rhett, could I add a few things? Please. Yeah, so, so for Fletcher and just I think tonight is kind of a, a chance to reset a little bit on this project. And um, I just wanted to clarify a few things. Um, so, you know, as, as most of the commission knows, you know, we were part of this much larger conservation effort 
uh, spearheaded by Castrol to preserve about 190 acres of land, both in Amherst and Hadley, we ended up with the fee interest in the, the so-called Zala property between Catherine Cole and Podick. And our goal here overall is to create a trail system that um, makes sense, is, is uh, a responsible trail system that uh, safeguards um, you know, the, the ecology both in Catherine Cole and Zala and um, Hodick. And so, you know, um, really uh, Conservation Works was asked to come in by the partnership between Gestro and, and the town uh, to really um, do some of the bog bridging work. So that's what brings Conservation Works and Pete to the table here. Um, in some regard, this, if we took Conservation Works out of the equation, this would be the department if you will, coming to, to the, the commission and Brad and Tyler would be doing, you know, proposing to do the work. In this case, we had funding through Kestrel and it's a way for uh, one, one less projects to be on the, on, on the shoulders of Brad and Tyler. So it's a great opportunity to partner with Kestrel and Conservation Works. So I think tonight is really about kind of resetting and I just wanted to kind of rattle through, you know, the, the trails at Podick uh, the trails we're talking about um, and, and are focused on are, have probably been there for 50 years. Um, uh, our choice here in kind of doing nothing is that, you know, if you've been out there as uh, some of these trails are, are, are muddy and wet in season, and what happens is when hikers, when users, when people encounter those conditions during wet uh, seasons, what do they do is they, they go around them and they create braided trails and they impact more wetland resource areas, riverfront areas, et cetera, and the list goes on. So the, the trails are becoming braided through the woods. And I think a great example of this, frankly, is at Amethyst Brook. Um, and I think none of us want Podick or Catherine Cole to become Amethyst Brook in that regard. Um, so our goal here is to try to keep people on the narrowest portion of the trail, which would be, you know, on these raised uh, boardwalks. If we, if we take action, that's the result, is that we concentrate those impacts on, on these, uh, this so many linear feet of, of, um, of bog bridging. Um, so I think, you know, that's our goal. Um, our feeling is that this, this project doesn't adversely impact any of the interest of, of the act, of, of, of the Wetlands Protection Act. The goal is actually to protect wetlands. So Aaron, I'm not sure we did have our, uh, we did hire a wetlands scientist to go out and do some, some delineation. I'm not sure, is that ready for prime time yet, Aaron, or not? Um, it's, I could share with you um, what the plan looks like, but it's, it's basically a hand-drawn rendering, which um, it makes sense to me because I spoke with him um, and he kind of explained the methodology behind his notes. But just to um, kind of give an update on that and what he saw when he went out to the site is that basically very similar to what my interpretation was when I walked, which is there are some segments that are wet, um, but the, the, what the DEP wetland layer shows is that the entire area is wet and that is not an accurate representation of what's going on out there. Um, there are sort of fits and starts. There's like sections where it's wet and then it's dry again and then it's wet again. And then um, there are sections where there might be a, a wetland that encroaches on one side of the trail um, or encroaches on the other side of the trail. But it's not just <laughs> it's not just bog bridging plowing through a huge wetland complex like it would appear looking at the DEP wetlands layer. It's um, it's uh, sort of a meandering um, wetland boundary and, and the trail does not just um, wholesale plow through that wetland. So I think that it, it's a very good thing that we had the, um, uh, 
the wetland specialist go out and take a look at it because at the end of the day there's going to be a, quite a bit less um, documented impact in wetlands than um, what we're showing now. And the other thing that's interesting and this is related to Hadley is that the gentleman who did the delineation discovered that um, in one section on the on the Hadley side that if the trail gets moved um, about 15 feet to the east they would be completely out of the wetland and so that might be an opportunity for mitigation if the trail just gets moved 15 feet because then um, the previous trail could just get seeded down and um, it, you know it wouldn't be putting the bog bridging through the wetland. Um, so that's just kind of a a brief explanation. If, if I could add one thing, uh, an item that Hadley wanted to know about was the extent of temporary disturbance as we put the bog bridging in. And we have a way of, of putting it in as we go, basically. So you put in one section and then walk on that to put in the next section and they're tied together uh, at, at each end so that they you don't get uh, different heights uh, as as they are used over the years so that so the disturbance during construction is very little Karen I realize this is just an informal sketch but can you enlarge that at all I I, I might maybe others are having trouble yeah I and can is, is yeah and let me just try to interpret this a little because I, I did he did kind of explain his methodology here mm -hmm. so like um if you're looking at this at this area where the trail is located, sorry, just trying to get this to stop popping up. So like um, you can see the trail comes in. Um, there is a wetland between one and two and five and six. There's a wetland there and then there's an upland and then the wetland starts again between 10 and 11 and extends to 15 and 16 and then it becomes upland again and it continues on until I think that's 21, 20 to 21 there. So then it starts again, that's where the stream is. And then um, I can't quite, I think it's 25 to 26, it becomes upland again. And as you continue along the path, there is in this case, there's a um, between 30 and 31, there's sort of like a little wetland that encroaches on the trail. Um, and so you can see like on the DEP wetland layer, which is the yellow hatched, it shows the entire area is wet. But based on the delineation, there are sort of these little little sections that are wet and that there are uplands in between. So based on those, we could, you know, collect data points in the field and actually estimate how much of this bog bridging is proposed in, in wetlands. And I think at the end of the day, it's not gonna be very much. So I just wanted to give a, a sense of that. And then- um, Could you point out just, just, I know it's in another town, but just because this whole trail system is all one, yeah. where, where, where did he propose moving the trail 15 feet? So we're um, up here where it's 70, um, 70 to seven, uh, 77 I believe and then 60 to 68. This is the area where if the trail gets moved um, about 15 feet to the east um, that this wet the, this wetland complex that the trail is currently going through could be completely avoided. Hmm. I know that section well that makes a lot of sense and Pete, Pete does too. Oh yeah, and that's something we can definitely look at. I've, I've walked that section to the right. You know, it's always an issue of how easy it is to close the old route that's been used for a long time, but uh, it's definitely something that we can look at. But I mean- anyway, I appreciate that. I know we don't want to get distracted tonight um, yeah. over in the neighboring town of Hadley, but yeah. we can provide that information for, for Pete and the, and the CONCOM. We're, uh, I'm curious, uh, Aaron, what, what would be your recommendation for us to move forward in terms of, of, of the delineation? Um, is, is he contracted to do more than this and actually? He's gonna prepare a report to mm -hmm. us, which has actually his, um, his uh, data sheets, the um, uh, 
the filled out uh, wetland delineation forms. And so what I'd like to do with that is, you know, basically just prepare more or less a response to the DEP comments because the DEP comments on this project were extensive. Um, I mean, there was more comments on this than there were on some pretty um, major projects that we've done. And so just to address some of the comments, a couple of them were related to the wetland delineation itself. And so to say, okay, well, we're not using the DE, we're not using the DEP wetland layer here. We've hired somebody. Mm -hmm. This is what the delineation looks like. And then we can actually get into more nitty gritty as far as <clears throat> the footprints of alteration. Because on the original NOI application, it was noted that there was BBW alteration, but there was no quantifiable square footage um, cubic footage of, of wetland impact. And what this would allow us to do is to quantify that so that we could revise the form and actually include what the modification would be um, and address some of the additional comments. But I think it's a great start and I don't think we have to really change the project. I think the project can stay as is. I think it's just merely illustrating that there's quite a bit less impact than what it first appeared. Um, from the application. Add, I, th I think we identified something like 45 square feet of impact and from the looks of the map there it's going to be probably 38 instead of 40, 45. So you can see that there's a, there's some difference but not a lot. And I guess Brett for for the commission you know I, I you know I, I um, Pete, um, Aaron, and I had some long conversations about this, and no, I, we took the DEP, uh, the DEP comments uh, really seriously, and and took the the added step to say let's get somebody out there to delineate along this trail, and and I hope the the commission appreciates that, and we, you know, we 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 um, we we are trying to address as many of the DEP comments as we can, and and reduce any impact, and as Pete said, uh, the impact could be really quite small when, it, when, when all is said and done here. So I'm curious what the commission kind of thinks and if they have more direction for us, because it is really the department working with Pete and Kestrel to move this bog bridging project forward. And I think all of us need to be, and I'm sure everybody is, we have to be cognizant of our potential conflicts of interest once it's on our own lands. And so that definitely gets kind of awkward. And so making sure that we're holding ourselves to at least the same standard as if it wasn't um, town lands. Well, if I could, that's why I wanted to point out that this really, I signed the application. So even though Conservation, work, conservation Works is the contractor, um, I signed the application, so that's why I also I pointed out that this could be Brad and Tyler doing this work. It's really, you know, I think that was a, a great comparison there. That it's it's Pete and Conservation Works working, if you will, for the town of Amherst, but being paid by Castrol to do the work. Yeah, and I mean, one of the reasons for all of the initial DEP. Um, filings or DEP notes was because I don't know if the property, the project was much expanded at that point. And at that point, there was also work being done on the northern property. And I think that's where most of it was. And just by removing that, I think that's probably solved most of the issues. Is that correct? That's right. I think that set off a few alarm bells. And just so the commission, the commission knows about the POTIC section, which was in the original application and, and was removed, um, we won't know. We won't know what the trail looks like to the north on Podic until <laughs> until the beavers are removed and the water recedes, because that trail for for most people, um, I know I've walked it and you know actually took off, took off my boots and Pete walked right through there. But there's a good I don't know four to ten inches of water probably in that in that large ponded area there where there used to be a stream crossing uh, with a couple of culverts. We'll have to wait until the beavers are removed, the water comes down to see what the condition of that trail is. Will we need to redo that stream crossing? Will it still be there? 
Will we need bog bridging there? What will the condition of that be? That is an old road. I will point out that is an old farm road, just like much of on Catherine Cole. Um, this entire area was farmed. And of course, um, the Zawas harvested firewood in Podic and Catherine Cole. So th that's why, you know, we're for the most part use these old woods roads, these old farm roads as, as trails. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so Aaron, I know that you were making comments, you know, as this went along. I don't know if you have additional comments as well. Well, I mean, as as staff, I mean, my recommendation would be for for me to, t you know, I haven't gotten the report from yep. um, Dave H uh, Haynes yet, but to take this and actually get it. Um, onto a GIS plan where I can um, plug in the distances of the bog bridging through the wetland areas and, and quantify a square footage of impact to include on the NOI form. And then to be able to provide this um, data back to DEP um, to address some of those issues. And then basically what I'd like to do is kind of get all our ducks in a row so that at the December 9th meeting that we're, you know, I'm prepared with a recommendation for us to issue an order of conditions. And um, I guess just just to feel like um, I'm giving this review some some rigor based on the, you know, um, <laughs> extensive comments that were received. And also potentially some recommendations for the Hadley side based on the delineation, we could share this with Hadley as well. Um, Cause I think that that will eliminate a lot of impact on the Hadley side. Okay. Yeah, I agree with the overall assessment. I mean, I think this will, you know, at the end of the day, it's really gonna improve the conditions out there. So, okay. Um, so other commissioners, do you have any comments or thoughts on this one? Yeah, and I agree, Dave, that's going to be interesting to see what happens with Podic once the water goes down. So. And um, just as an FYI on this, the um, there were, for this date, there were additional abutters notified for the first hearing that opened. Um, only a portion of the abutters were notified. So just to make sure that um, mm -hmm. we check that there's no public here that um, attended that was not notified the first time around. Yeah. And for any commissioners who haven't been out there, I know Fletcher, you're out there regularly. It is a nice little walk out there. So it's pretty flat, but it's a nice little walk. Yeah, I'm oh. hoping to get out there later like this week or next, I'm really hoping. <laughs> I, I, would, I would recommend wearing orange during the next- That couple. is my go-to color now, Dave. <laughs> so, um, I'm just gonna dye my hair. These areas were <laughs> and historically hunted and yeah. still be today. I mean, uh, I'm and not bring sure muck boots. hunters out there in a long time, but um, it's possible. All right, orange and muck boots. I'm I'm now very prepared. Thank you. <laughs> Fred, stick your hands. Any... Stick stick your hands in the wood chips. Really, you know, really get it out there. <laughs> Are there any comments? I, I know we have a couple of people on the call. Any of those folks want to make any comments or? Yeah, Other so folks? from the public, if you have any comments, just raise your hand virtually. Yeah. So one of those is Michael Liu. So he's probably. And the other two, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. so, no, not hearing any at this point. Um, and so anything else on this one? If not, we'll be looking for a motion to continue. The, the only thing I'd like to say, and, and Pete, Pete uh, well, I think we'll get a chuckle out of this. When we say those trails are 50 years old, um, my birthday was yesterday. And uh, I, can, I can tell you that I was out on those trails when I was very young. So. Um, they be, I, I remember being out there when I was, you know, eight, nine, ten. So, um, Pete and I go way back on these trails at Bodick. Is that right, Pete? Yeah, you look pretty good, Dave. You're getting old. <laughs> it was, yeah. Well, Dave was just saying that's only 20 years ago, Pete. So, yeah. 
Yeah. It was a long, <laughs> birthday, Dave. It was a long time ago, but uh, it was uh, yeah. that 5 number rings true in a lot of ways. Congratulations on the big number. So my number is higher. I said I was out there when I was uh. eight, nine. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll leave it at that. A little mystery. What number well, is it? Congratulations on a number. So. <laughs> Well, also congrats on we got the property protected in the middle and we're doing some good, good, some other good stuff going on there too, so. Yeah. This is all wonderful stuff. I mean, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. I mean, this is like, this is, this is what we, we do this for is to make things better out there. And at the end of the day, I think that's exactly what's gonna happen. It's just gonna be such a great improvement and the wetlands are gonna be protected better than they were before. I think one thing to mention is that this probably wouldn't have been put up this year if the food bank, if the Zala property hadn't, uh, we hadn't finished the APR on, on that one. Uh, I think Dave and I both worked for years uh, talking to Tony and then talking to Ray and the family about the APR. And uh, now that it's with food bank, uh, Andrew Morehouse, the executive director is very glad to support the project. He's, he thinks it's great. Excellent. Just a quick side note, Pete, related Pete, Pete Westover, myself and, and Rich Hubbard, who has done land conservation in the Valley for 30 plus years. I can distinctly remember being in Tony Zala's living room trying to convince him to protect his land. And uh, I think one of us even brought a pen and the APR documents and, and he would look at the documents, maybe have the pen in his hand and then go, no, nah, I, I don't think so. And, you know, <laughs> we went multiple times to his living room and we would talk for an hour and hope to come out of there with, with wet ink and we never did. And, and sadly he passed away, I think in his seventies or so, but is his brother ultimately did the deal. So, so anyway. Good. But Ray is still with us. He's a great guy. Yeah. Yes. So good, good stuff. Takes a while. That was 25 years ago, probably. So the long game. The long game. Yeah. <laughs> Real long game with the zone. <laughs> so. Okay. So to move the meeting uh, along, do we have anything else that we want to say about this one before we continue? I just, do we know the date and time of that? Um, I would recommend that we say December 9th at 7.35. All right, I'm ready. I wrote it down, I'm not Jen. <laughs> um, all right, so I move to continue this to December, the meeting on December 9th at 7.35 p.m. Second. Thank you. So Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. And aye for me as well. So Pete, we will see you then. And okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, you guys, and have a good Thanksgiving. You, you as too. well. You too. Okay. So um, that is our last official agenda item. Obviously, we have some other ones that are on the list. Um, and so I was noticing over on the attendees I, that Michael Liu, that you're with us. And uh, Aaron, does Michael have any other um items he may not know that we already dealt with some of them so um. yeah i'm going to promote him to panelist real quick just so we can give him a very quick update because he's been waiting um and you'll just have to unmute yourself mike hopefully you can is that all right can you hear me yes yep, yep. so so Mike, at the beginning of the meeting, um, we had a bunch of time and I'm so sorry that you've been sitting here because we- Oh no, oh. <laughs> we handled a couple. Um, so okay. Common School got their certificate of compliance and um, the Pomeroy Lane um, single family home lot was given a two year extension. Two year, okay. Yeah, um, with a um, strong encouragement to move the project forward because of those right. wetland, those wetland um, fac wet plants that are, are um, creeping. creeping up yeah. that hillside, so. I've already given um, the property owner that information. Obviously he's trying to sell the lot, but you know, anyway, we'll see how it goes, but I appreciate it. Um, I was on another conference call with um, 
a client in Deerfield earlier this evening, so I couldn't check in earlier, but um, I enjoyed my time listening to the discussion you all had. <laughs> nice. Um, is there anything else that you need to relay to me? Um, otherwise, I'd be happy to report this to um, Common School and um, Rolling Hills Properties for the Pomeroy Lane parcel. I think that, that those were the only two items I had for you, Mike, on the agenda tonight. So. I think so, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. You weren't associated well, with Huntington Avenue at all. I think that was Bucky. No. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, hey, I appreciate it. And have a good night, you guys. You too, man. All right. See you next time. Take care. Good night. Bye -bye. Okay, so are we ready to go on to Canton Avenue or are you saving that one for the end for us, Karen? Um, I think we should jump to Canton Avenue because I see Bob Stover on the call and I believe that I, I just got a message very late this afternoon, um, which I didn't have a chance to respond to, but um, from um, Peter Wilson, um, I believe Bob is his consultant and I... Um, just promoted him to a panelist so he can speak. I'm not sure if the person on the phone, that might be um, Pete. Um, so if whomever is listening is able to raise your hand. Um, I don't think you can do that on the phone. Uh, okay. Um, we, can allow them to, here, we can allow them to speak for a minute. Okay. So whoever is on the phone, you're allowed to talk right now. So if you wouldn't mind you can identify yourself if you want. You can stay anonymous, but um, if you are associated, particularly with Canton Avenue, now would be the be good to know. Yep. Can you hear me? This is Harold Wilson. Excellent. Okay. Good. Uh, so, yep, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. So, Aaron, do you want to uh, refresh everybody on what's happening with Canton? Yeah. So, um, at the last meeting, we um had received a request for a continuation for um the canton avenue permit which was dep number 89629 i went out to do a site visit and check flagging and when i was out looking at the flagging um i documented that clearing work had started on lot two uh, which is the lot that is in the picture um on the screen right now Hopefully. Uh, there's no picture on the screen. Okay, thank you. Let me make sure I should properly share that. Okay. Okay. Now, or we can see your screen at least. Okay, so this is a picture of the lot, lot two that um, was cleared and and maybe even filled. It's it's the wetland is uh, the site is pretty unrecognizable and and where right. there was once a wetland there does not appear to be one anymore. There's no flagging anyway. Um, so basically it was documented that, um, you know, the order of conditions was violated, that the town was not notified of the start of work. There was no pre-construction meeting, no erosion controls, no DEP file number, flagging was missing or removed. The site was cleared. The wetland appears to have been compromised. Um, I spoke with both, um, Dave, Dave Z and Brett about this to try to f come up with a path forward because it was kind of a shock right before the last meeting and I wasn't sure how, you know, um, folks wanted to proceed. So based on um, conversations, um, the, the determination was to issue an enforcement order and basically um, request that the owner attend the hearing tonight to discuss it. Um, there was no other conditions placed on the enforcement order. So um, basically, I think what we should discuss, well, first of all, um, when and if the commission chooses to um, ratify the enforcement order, and then determine kind of what the next step forward is. And by next step, you know, we have a request for continuation for this project. Are we going to issue a continuation? Are we going to require um, that the site be restored, kind of what, what does the commission feel is the correct path forward. And just to give you a visual, um, the little blue arrow is where I was standing when I took the photo and I highlighted where the wetland was. 
located, um, where the flagged wetland was located. The yellow hatching kind of indicates where the clearing was, and you can see that in the photo here. Um, so that's a quick update. And Aaron, can you just remind Can you hear me? This is Bob Stover. Uh, I'm sorry, one second, Bob. Um, sure. So Aaron, can you also just remind us if this is just for, the continuation is just for lot one or if this is for lot one and two, because two, it looks like there's no activity on so far when I was out there. Yeah, so there's actually three lots in the subdivision. Um, one of them, there was already a house on to my knowledge. Um, and then there was lots two and three. So the, the, but the work associated with the order of conditions was for lots two and three, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. Okay, okay thank you. Um, yeah, so Bob, if you wanna give us an update on uh, what's going on out there, or if any sort of clarifications. Yes, uh, Aaron, could you put the uh, lot plan back on that you showed us? Sure. Yeah, so I have spent some time out there, especially uh, yesterday and uh, about a week ago. And uh, I did mark all the flagging that I could find, refresh it, uh, there are flags missing. Uh, there has been the clearing of some brush and some trees that were dead uh, have been cut. Uh, no grading has taken place. Uh, all of the uh, clearing of brush has happened in, in the buffer zone. I mean, most of the lot is, is in the buffer zone. The, uh, the area shown in red, uh, those flags are missing, uh, but it, the area seems to be intact. Uh, I did measure that, that flag that is the leftmost. Um, so the work, so I, I don't think that any wetland has been impacted yet. I'm sorry, Bob, can you just introduce ourself, yourself so we know your background and your affiliation with the project? Okay, uh, Peter has hired me to help him uh, uh, move forward on this project. Uh, I've been out there a couple of times since the spring. Um, Peter tells me that most of the work that we're talking about was done last fall. Uh, I've got, uh, oh, 30 years in wetlands work and um, uh, wetland replications, wetland delineation. Um, I'm very good, uh, especially trained in soils and wetland soils. Uh, so does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. It just provides a little bit more context. So thank you. Sure. Yeah, I mean, um, just to respond to what Bob said. I mean, um, just looking at the image, this this area here that's been cleared and grubbed directly in front of me was basically standing right in front of that wetland area. So I'm not sure how, um, I mean, it, it wasn't like brush clearing. There was, there was significant clearing and grubbing and probably stump pulling that occurred in this area. Um, to say there was no grading, there was definitely some earthwork that occurred there. It was it was open bare ground. Um, there was no flagging that I could see on this lot at all, and um, the access on the plan um, shows. If you look at the plan, where that blue arrow is, it see how it shows the driveway cutting very far left and skirting around that wetland right against the property mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. versus looking straight into the property right where that wetland would have been is basically like a patch of sand. Um, so um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think a site visit would be a good idea to go out and take a look at the refreshed flagging um, to see because it seems like it, it's not squaring up with what I saw in the field. That uh, that sounds um, very good to me. Th this is the owner, Harold Wilson. Hello, Aaron. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Aaron. I just was going to jump in real quick. So that area that that you're you're talking about on the right hand side, uh, as you're looking at the lot, 
that had no that had nothing there nothing growing there on that thing there was no trees no scrub it was just like it was uh i stayed you know on the left hand side going in you know as far away from that wetland area and like bob was saying we just went in and cleaned up dead scrub there were several tall dead trees that were we thought were, were hazardous and uh with the kids in the area there there's small kids across the street that looked to play um we wanted to knock those down and get them get the hazard uh dealt with so that's you know i under I, I understand what you're saying but it it's a violation of your order of conditions and the town was never contacted um prior to the start of work which is a requirement of your permit um and it just seems very um you know to have a violation like that no dp file number no pre-construction meeting it's um when you have a permit like this that's um you know, a state permit and there are jurisdictional wetland areas, um, we have to be notified. So um, well, we didn't we didn't realize that we didn't have any any uh, uh, paperwork showing us that we had to have these things done just to go in there and do any any, uh, like I said, clearing up this dead material. So you guys didn't have the order of conditions. Yeah, we have a we have a we have a plan for the other lot um, that requires us to do all the things you're talking about. But for this lot that we're talking about now, there was no conditions at all for this lot, and we were told that we, we wouldn't have to cross any wetlands. We got 30 feet from the property line over to where the wetland starts, so we we didn't realize that we had to do any of this that you're talking about for that lot. Okay, well, the order of conditions covers both these lots. The plans cover both these lots. So there is um, no there is no plan for for this lot. That yeah, we, we were not going to receive it. Uh, well, we the, only have the plan for the for the other lot because they're separate. They're separate. They're not together. They're not, um, you know, they're separate lots. They're two separate building lots. Correct. But the order of conditions yes. the 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 plan that was prepared by Buddy Sparkle shows both lots and and the work that was approved was on both of the lots and there's wetlands on both the lots i realize that there is there is some wetland on that lot but not we weren't anywhere near that but go ahead and the other thing to remember about this one and obviously this predates you but it is part of the history of these lots these were fairly contentious lots when they got put in there was a lot of input from um, local neighbors, from abutters. There's a lot of discussion from the Conservation Commission. There's only, I think, two of us on here now who were there then. Um, but so this is a fairly sensitive area, which again, that predates you, but just to let you know the history, if yeah. you're not familiar with that. Okay. Um, but particularly the one that is, this plan always gets me a little confused because it, it's not oriented how I think it should be. I could be wrong on that, but um, going to the right, um, that other lot, that was the one that we definitely spent a lot more time on. And so when this first got brought to my attention, I was a little confused as well, Mr. Wilson, because I was thinking of that one and not this lot. And so I had to verify that with Aaron as well about if the conditions covered both. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, so probably a site visit is probably the next step. And, I think so. I mean, I, I just, the commission, this is just an important consideration for the board tonight. So this came to us as a request for an extension to the original order of conditions, um, which expires, well, it expired yesterday, but I mean, I, I could, I could predate a, an extension if the board felt that they wanted to issue an extension on it, um, you know. I'm not recommending, I'm not making a recommendation in any, in any direction. I'm just letting you know that that's how this issue came to our attention and that um, originally when it was submitted, it was like a day before a, our very busy first meeting in October. And so I put it to the second meeting in October to give myself some time to get out there, but um, letting it expire 
has consequences. So just to put that out there. Okay, so just so I'm where uh, we understand what the ramifications are. If we do not move to continue it today, we could not continue it on the ninth. And I'm not saying that we'd want to, but just so we know what our options are. Um, it, it creates some gray area because, you know, it will have expired. It yep. will have expired. I mean, you, the commission could certainly, um, you know, backdate it, but I, I do think that that gets, I mean, 24 mm -hmm. hours, I think is one thing, but <laughs> three or four weeks is another. Um, so I, it's, the timing is not great, but um, it's, um, it's an important yeah. consideration. I mean, the other thing we can do, I mean, um, we don't have to continue for, we can set how long it continues for. So I guess in theory, we could say that we could do, we can continue this for three weeks with the current um, enforcement order in place, which is cease and desist. So nothing else would happen, but that would give us the opportunity to continue it at that point if we so desired. Does that seem logic or possible, Aaron? Anything you wish to do uh, as far as a continuation is I can make happen. Um, um, if so, just just to put in perspective, you know that that it's a legal document. I've got to send it to DEP, and it also has to be recorded at the order of, or at the Registry of Deeds. So I just think we should, depending on how much time the the board decides to give on the extension, I just think the board should be really strategic about how much time we allow. Um, in consideration that, you know, that that whole process has to be gone through in order to um, make sure it's legal. Yep. And it's no fun. And yeah, it's not good. Um, and then the other piece would be if we let it expire, then for additional work to happen on this property, they would have to refile. For the construction of the, the homes, they would have to refile a new mm -hmm. notice of intent application. Correct. Yep. Um, okay. I'm, I'm confused about one thing. Was Mr. Wilson not associated with the initial uh, request? Correct. So the original application came through um, as a separate owner. And from what I understand, Wilson Construction or um, um, it's, it's under, I think, listed as um, Wilson Construction LLC or um, Wilson Properties LLC as the owner acquired the property, I believe, last year. And did not receive any of the documentation from the previous owner? Well, to be perfectly honest, any, any real estate transaction that takes place, an order of conditions is recorded on a deed. Right. And when there's a title search that's completed for a real estate transaction, um, an attorney will find the order of conditions, which lists every condition that is listed on the project, as well as a reference to the approved plan um, associated with the project. So um, could, could somebody buy a property and not be aware of it? Not likely. If, I mean, they requested a continuance, so I'm assuming they knew about it. I, you know, they requested a continuance a year later, so I'm assuming they knew about it. Okay. They knew there was an order of conditions on it. I'm sure they knew about it in a general sense. Uh, they might not have ever seen the order of conditions, although they were aware that this was uh, required permitting due to conservation wetland issues. Yeah, they may not have seen them. They were available. They're definitely on the deed. So, but yeah. And so we don't need to speculate on that. Right. Yeah. They should have seen so, them. Well, either way, so the situation we're in now is um, if we let this thing expire, so we have to figure out if we're going to let this thing expire or not. Because obviously the consequences of expiring. So we have to figure out how we're in. To this enforcement order and continue well there's an enforcement order in place tonight that we should ratify we need which to ratify a separate a separate issue 
Um, so that's the initial enforcement order. But then, yeah, what we want to do for additional actions, if anything. So we can just ratify the existing um, order and let the other conditions, let everything else expire. And there's no other action I don't think we would have to take. At that point, the onus would be back on the owner to refile. Um, I also just want to bring up one point of clarification that's sort of, um, uh, it sounds very administrative, but um, so we are short two people tonight on the commission. So I don't know how people are going to vote if we're going to vote in unison. Um, but if we don't, we need at least four people to, um, to approve a motion tonight. Not to put any pressure on anyone. <laughs> so your votes all count, but they count even more tonight. So. I mean, the ideal thing, I mean, I'd love to get out there. Well, I've been out there, but um, I'd love for, you know, to get out there with you know, I, I didn't have permission to be on the property, so I didn't go there. I just stood on the road and you could see what Aaron saw. Um, well, I would like to meet you out there. The pro that'd be great. The problem is that we have to make some sort of decision tonight's the problem. So. Yeah. Um, you know, I served and, on the uh, Belchertown uh, Conservation Commission and uh, it's a matter of some trepidation to quote their policies <laughs> to the Amherst Conservation Commission. But um, they, uh, we always felt that if there was an enforcement order that that kind of suspended uh, the, uh, the process of renewing and continuing a notice of intent. I'm working on a subdivision in Belchertown and it, it's my understanding that it's been in functioning on an enforcement order for since the three or four years I've been involved in it. So anyway, I mean, I think the ideal solution from my point of view is that, uh, that the, we ultimately get an extension of the order and um, that uh, we resolve all the issues that uh, are out there, get the wetland flags back up. As I say, I, Anytime I found a remnant of an old flag, I reflagged it. Um, I would like to get out there and reestablish all the other flags. Uh, the flags are missing in this area that was outlined in red, uh, but we measured it off from there's two property pins right there. So we had some good ties to identify where that, uh, that southmost, I guess, uh, flag is. And I, I think you'll see that the wetland itself has not been damaged, but it work was done right next to it. Um, and I think you'll see that most of the clearing that we've been talking about uh, happened in the buffer or, or even a little bit beyond the buffer. Yeah, but I mean, just um, altering the vegetation, the buffer, that's problematic as well, obviously. Oh, certainly, certainly. So are we, are you, would you be able, well, at least we can agree on one thing. We want to see a site visit. Would you be able to reflag that wetland before yes. the site visit? I, I, if, if it's all right with my clients, I would love to do it. Because then we could get a better idea of what we're looking at. If those wetlands that are on the original plan are flagged again. And so now yes. we could really get to identify the extent of what we're talking about? Yes, I think other than that area that was outlined in red, mm -hmm. the flags, I, I think I found most of the uh, remnant flags for the rest of the delineation on that lot. Uh, so. Yeah, so, I mean, Erin? Um, I mean, there was a survey, those, those flags were surveyed located yes. and um, I think what we're talking about is re-identifying the surveyed locations of the original flagging. I just right. want to be very clear about that as opposed to 
reflagging where we think the wetland is now. Right. No, I'm not talking about uh, redelineating it. I'm talking about reestablishing the original flags. I just find it curious that flags exist on the entire project footprint with the exception of this one area that appears to have been cleared and altered. Um, and so just, it's just very, um, yeah. And Bob, are those being reestablished via um, survey methods? So using survey equipment or some other methodology? I think to do it in time for a site visit, I would, uh, I would simply go out there and reestablish them myself using uh, tape measures, et cetera. Uh, but they could be replaced by surveyors eventually. Okay. Um, I mean, that would be the preferred methodology, obviously. The um, survey? Yes. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I kind of know where I'm leaning at this point. I mean, I think it would make sense to do some sort of continuation, probably, you know, as Aaron was suggesting, being strategic about it. So making not a three week but you know, I'm not sure what would be a reasonable time. So a few months type of thing with the current conditions on there. So there's still a full cease and desist so nothing else is happening out there. But that would give us time, that would give the applicant time to reflag, do everything else that's necessary out there, give us time to go out and do a full site visit and then reassess. Um, and at that point, yeah, we can move forward, I would think. I think that's very prudent, Brett, and quite frankly, any extension on an order of conditions requires that the flagging be in place at the time that the extension is requested. Even a request for certificate of compliance requires that the original flagging be in place. So for the flagging to, to be gone, it's impossible for us to render any type of judgment on the site. Um, however, I do think that a condition of the extension should be that they're placed based on survey points. Yeah, I mean, particularly given how much disturbance is out there. Yeah. By the way, can you see me? No. No. Okay. It's all I see is my name in a black square. Well, yeah, that's all you see. Turn that's your video on. on. Turn you your want. video on, yeah. Yeah. I, I have some experience with Zoom, but not a whole lot. The lower left corner. Okay. Um, so um, I, I, that sounds good to me. Yeah, um, I agree. So, Aaron, would you have a general recommendation on what sort of length would make sense? I mean, you know, somewhere probably like three months sounds about right to me, but I, you would know better than I. That's a great question. How, Bob, how long would it take for flags to be replaced based on survey? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, probably, I would think a month would be a safe. Yes. So uh, let's just say a month. Um, that would put us um, right before Christmas. So two months, let's just say, would put us um, end of January. Um, if they could be placed within a month, then that would give um, an additional four weeks in January for the commission to get out there and look at the survey placed flags. And then at the January 27th meeting, um, there could be con consideration, but I think Brett makes an excellent point, which is, you know, um, Will we have a quorum? Will we, I mean, will, will we have had a chance to get out and do us, everybody do a site visit, all those things. And we may wanna give ourselves a little extra time. Um, I don't think th three months is a exorbitant extension period. I think that's very reasonable for us to try to resolve the enforcement. Okay. 
So Bob and Mr. Wilson, does that sound like a a reasonable time frame for the two of you? Um, yeah, I, I think so. How about you, Bob? Uh, it sounds good to me. Okay. Okay, so um, why don't we first set the, can you tell us the date and time for that one, Aaron? And then we, we have a couple of things we're gonna need to do. We have to first ratify the current enforcement order, um, and then we're gonna need to do a continuation. Yeah, so my recommendation would be that the, that the, um, that the permit be extended until February 24th that the um, order of conditions be continued to February 24th. And we don't need to set a specific time because this is not a hearing. Um, uh, yep, okay. Yeah. So looking for a motion for that, for uh, extending the order of conditions. I got it. All right, uh, I move to extend the order of conditions to February 24th. Second. Thanks. <laughs> so Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I as well. So, okay, so we are good on that one. So that, um, so the order stands until the 24th and we'll come up with some sort of resolution before that. And so at this point we need to ratify the uh, enforcement order, Aaron. Yeah, and um, I would recommend that on the ratification of the enforcement order that the commission um, include conditions or um, requirements for a site visit with the board um, that prior to the site visit that flags be replaced based, uh, that wetland flags be replaced based on survey. And do we need to reiterate cease and desist or is that already in there? That's already in there. Okay. All right, so I move to ratify the enforcement order um, with the conditions that the uh, survey, uh, wetland flagging would be replaced by the survey points. Second. Okay, so Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. And I as well. Okay, so I think we have a path forward for this one. Um, so once you have an idea of when those points will be um, in the field, if you can get in touch with Aaron and then Aaron can coordinate a time for us to actually get out on the property, that'd be great. Sounds so, good to me. Okay. Is this anything that abutters have to know about? I don't think technically. No. Nope. So, um, there, abutters would be interested in this though. That's what I meant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank okay. you. Thank Take you. Care. Thanks, guys. Yep. Have a thanks. Have a good Thanksgiving. Bye bye. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Hope you guys had your coffee. <laughs> I think I'm going to go get some. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to go through this really quickly for you. My yawns just keep getting bigger and bigger and more like consuming. It's fine. I know. I know. I, I'm going to try to make this go. Trust <laughs> me. Trust me. I'm tired too. I know. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, let's start with Applebrook. Um, so um, we received a request for certificate of compliance for lot seven um, on Applebrook. And I'm just going to give a little um, disclosure. Um, I filed a um, notice of potential perceived conflict of interest um, disclosure with Dave Zomek and also um, Paul Bockelman because um, my aunt and uncle are direct abutters to Lot 7 and I wasn't aware of this until I pulled the plan um, on Friday afternoon and saw where where it was actually located. So um, just for the sake of transparency, I'm not going to offer any recommendation. I'm just going to sort of present 
the application and the photographs for this. Um, but just to provide um, a little bit of information by way of background, there's actually three orders of conditions that are recorded on this lot um, or on there's three overall orders of conditions that are tied to this lot. Um, and I don't know the entire history of the site other or of the subdivision other than to say that I know that the first two orders of conditions were related to um, denial, superseding orders, work never beginning. Um, so basically two of the orders of conditions were um, basically, if, if certificates of compliance were issued, it would say basically work never began associated with the given orders of conditions. The third order of conditions is the order of conditions where the subdivision was approved. And um, I think all but a, few, a handful of the lots um, that the homes have already been constructed, this being one of them. So this lot, there is no home on it. I don't, I'm, I, from what I understand, when the, when the permit was originally filed, the lot, the, the area where the subdivision is located was cleared. <clears throat> lot seven has come up with um, vegetation but no home was built there. And um, just show you. Um, so this is, this is what the lot looks like right now. Um, like the one to the right is, is a better representation of what the overall lot looks like. Um, it's kind of regrown with with vegetation. The silt fence is still in place on it. Um, the proposed single family home was located outside of jurisdiction, outside of the 100 foot buffer zone to the wetland. The wetland is um, basically along that tree line um, in the photo. And um, what this would do is issuing a certificate of compliance would basically um, mean that anybody who wants to do anything on this lot that's within CONCOM jurisdiction would have to refile to build a house um, because there's no house there. And this is basically, it's, it's saying we're closing out the, or, the order of conditions and anybody who, who wants to do anything there is gonna have to refile. The 100 foot buffer zone, somebody could build a house here without encroaching on the 100 foot buffer zone. The lot is large enough um, so just to kind of give a little background on it from reviewing the plans and such, um, there is uh, a paved driveway which comes into the lot, um, not all the way um, into the lot, but just sort of like, um, I would say maybe 30 feet of driveway comes into the lot. And then it's, it's a, um, a patch, the one on the picture on the left kind of shows there's like a dirt patch in front of the driveway. And then it's like a stockpile area. They've been using it for stockpiling building materials. And from what I understand, there's a closing on this lot taking place on Friday and that the, um, uh, the stockpiles are being removed on Friday at the closing time. I mean, when the closing occurs on the lot um, and it's owned by a potential owner, the stockpiles are being removed. So there's, again, there's three orders of conditions tied to this. Um, so certificate of compliance would essentially clear it from all three of those outstanding certificates of compliance. And the final order of conditions does include a house footprint for this house. So um, they'd have to start from scratch if they were within the buff, uh, if they were within jurisdiction. And Aaron, so is this another one of those examples where the orders of conditions are really for the whole subdivision? They are not really impacting this one as much directly. So um, the other, the other, um, the Hills subdivision is a different, is a kind of a different animal altogether because um, 
on that particular order of conditions, the board required individual filings for homes that were located mm -hmm. within jurisdiction. Whereas with this subdivision, the subdivision itself included house footprints already. Okay. A lot of times um, the, the former will be done on lots where people are doing a um, build to suit situation. Um, like, like the owner's going to buy the house, they're going to design the house themselves and decide the house footprint, how large decks and et cetera, versus a situation like this, where it looks like they actually very carefully planned the house footprints. And so they were already included in the order or in the application. Okay. And again, to clarify, um, so issuing, the, issuing this certificate of compliance basically means that it clears it for sale. So there's no over, there's no paperwork hanging on the deed, but they cannot build at least within jurisdiction without coming in front of us again. That's correct. So, okay. But why would we not give it? Why would I don't we see, I'm not, compliance? Uh, uh, there, there's, I don't really see any reason to not issue it. Right. Yep. I'm just trying to be as neutral as possible on this one. Right. I just, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going. Go house. Yep. Okay. So anybody else have any questions on this one? No. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I think we're looking for a recommendation to issue the order of a certificate of compliance for lot seven at Applebrook. Yeah, and, and I would recommend that any any motion to, so it's actually to issue three certificates of compliance. So mm -hmm. I would just motion to to clear to clear the lot in its entirety with um, certificates of compliance for the three outstanding orders of conditions. Oh, fine, okay, uh, I motion to, <laughs> I'm going to try it and I'm not going to get it right. I started to write it and then I messed it up. Uh, I motion to um, clear all three lots of the certificates of compliance. No, that's not right. No, one lot. Three, one lot. One lot right. three certificates. Three certificates in the one lot. There we go. Um, is that it? Uh, with the orders of conditions. <laughs> yeah. Over? I'm sorry. You're close. Um, yeah. So it's to, to issue. Um, to to clear lot seven of all outstanding orders of conditions by issuing three certificates of compliance. Okay, so I motion to clear lot seven of all orders of conditions by issuing the certificate of compliance. Perfect. Never Second. Second. <laughs> so Leroy. Nice job. Hi. Anna. Hi. Fletcher. Hi. Larry. Hi. And I for me as well. At least no one's watching at this point. <laughs> You're doing good. It's not easy. It's not easy to do, especially in front of an, you know a bunch of people. I just said it. I literally just had to pair it, and it was apparently too much for my brain at this moment. You know, you, you know this thing. This thing is recorded. That's why I like to say so moved. Yeah. <laughs> so moved is so but, nice you know, to you. It's the it's the principle of it, Larry. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, that was the that was the other hard hard one. Um, I think we're going to move on to some easier ones now. Um, Hickory Ridge is a little funky. Um, yes. Well, so it it is, but it's I don't think it's um, too funky. Um, once you see the plans, I think it'll all make sense. Um, so Hickory Ridge, there's two there's two outstanding items on Hickory Ridge. Um, the first is request for an amendment to the origin or to the order of conditions um, and the just to visualize what the the um, uh, request that's being made is if you see these are the approved this is the approved solar the uh, approved solar arrays on hickory ridge golf course there's already outstanding orders of conditions for these two approved um, um, solar array setups. The um, the amendments are for the two um, orange pads that you see. So they're requesting to add those pads and it's for a battery storage system is what I understand. 
there's a narrative associated with that, which is, um, this was provided by Tom Reedy. Um, they are, uh, the DC size of the array will increase from 5.24 megawatts to 6.2 megawatts. Um, less panels, but larger panels. Um, Racking system will be changed from fixed tilt to single axis trackers. So basically what they're doing is they're, they're putting in, they're changing it from these like fixed position um, solar panels to panels that will actually follow the sun. Um, and um, the, the change in the system itself requires a change to the battery storage system, which is what those orange footprint changes are to the solar array. But it's still kind of within the footprint, no? The original it's, footprint. What's that like purple shading? Yep, it's it's um it's all within the original footprint of the okay. original orders of conditions. Okay. Yep. And do we know anything about the batteries? Are there any potential issues associated with those? But we don't know. Like, are they are. adding yeah, was those battery storage already there? Are they no, yeah, no. Those were new. So no, these are new ba total battery storage. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure why they're keeping storage there because normally they just want to put it straight into the grid. But um, oh, is this for case, the trackers? They... Pardon? Is it for the trackers? Yeah, the batteries are for the trackers. Man, yeah. The town I used to okay. live in got these, and they broke within like three months. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and now they're stuck facing the wrong way. Oh, sweet. I got Let's clear some I more forest it. land for our solar. <laughs> Okay. That's a good question though. Is there issues with storage? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they're, I mean, I'm interested in that, but I mean. It's not relevant for us. It's really make a big difference. Or, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, not, not I mean, it's, it's not pertinent for what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Should we move to accept the amendment? Yes. Yep. I move to uh, accept the amendments for Hickory Ridge. Second. Oh, you got me. Larry? <laughs> Aye. So Fletcher? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Anna? Aye. And I for me as well. Okay, let's go on to some contamination, Aaron. Oh yeah. So and this is more of a um a verbal update, but they're on the um remediation side of things, they did some drilling to look at the um soil contamination just this past week just this earlier this week. And what they found was that the area of contamination is much smaller than what they had originally thought. And so um, they're looking at different options in terms of the in situ treatments, which would be basically um, injecting ozone into the area of contamination mm -hmm. to um, cause it to, um, uh, you know, it, it basically it breaks it down faster. Um, the area of contamination versus doing a um, uh, um, excavation of the contaminated soils. So they're they're right now they're doing the exploratory part to determine the best process to clean the site, um, and that's kind of where things stand. That was my last update, which was today. Um, so it's a quick one. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, there's a lot of technical stuff that they sent over, so I got lost in it somewhere. Yeah, there was a lot. Um, so just while we're still on Hickory Ridge, uh, if yep. Dave is still with us, do we have any updates on sort of the overall project at this point? I am here. Um, yeah, actually, conservation staff, we took a tour of Hickory today, as a matter of fact, this afternoon for an hour. Um, we are moving toward closing. I mean, these are all great steps. The 21E uh, cleanup is progressing nicely. Uh, at no cost to the town. And um, our hope is to close, I think late in December is a little optimistic, but as soon after the first of the year as possible. Ooh, that's exciting. Nice. I don't think I remember hearing a clo potential closing date yet. So yeah, <laughs> great. Right. Yeah, that'll be big. Okay, thank you, Dave. Sure. Okay, Aaron, next. Yeah, so um, 
this is a this is this is another request for a minor amendment to the order of conditions. This is associated with 200 Leverett Road, which at the time it came through, it was zero Leverett Road because it didn't yet have a, um, a address associated with it. Construction, um, I did go out and do a uh, pre-construction meeting with the um, with the folks who are doing work out here, they're building. You may recall it's um, on Leverett Road. If you're if you're headed towards Leverett, it's on the left hand side prior to going over Eastman Brook. Um, it is a single family home, and they're also putting in um, some pasture land for horses, a little dog kennel area, etc. That was all approved by the commission. Um, and they're also putting in a leach field. Um, the, the original application did not include installing a well because um, they were operating based on the assumption that um, town water line, the town water line extended um, far enough that they could tie into it. Oh. Um, but what they discovered is that it is um, about, let me see. Uh, did they say how long it was? It was like 200 feet or something. Uh, I think it was 200. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I had the exact length of it, but yeah, I think it's, it's like a hundred or 200 feet too short. So basically what they're trying to do is just extend the water line. Ooh. It's, it's on the opposite side of the road from the property and um, they're working with DPW to, they're paying and working with DPW to extend it um, wow. so that these folks can tie into the water line. Um, but there is a, a, so if you look at this little hand-drawn sketch, which I know is difficult to see and I apologize, um, it, it's um, right on the other side of that, there's kind of a little pond that's down um, lower from the road. And so, um, they had recommend doing like a towed in silt fence along the road, which I don't really like the idea of because it requires um, actually digging out to put the silt fence in. I would much rather see something like a, a straw wattle installed there um, during construction. And um, I mean, I think it's they're, they're right along the road shoulder with the work and um, yeah, so they're just requesting permission to extend the water line up so they can tie into it. Sure, if you think this straw waddle's good. I yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would definitely include conditions that there's no stockpiling, um, and that they stabilize um, upon completion. And so this is open trench that they're doing. Yeah. Yes. Yep, okay. they're they're just digging a trench, placing the pipe, and then closing it back over. I don't. Do they need to revegetate? I mean, it's going to be a small trench, I assume, but it's on the shoulder, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think that they should reseed and they should stabilize with uh, with mulch, probably preferably um, like straw and seed. Okay, that all sounds reasonable to me. Okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. Um, so I would just request a, a motion for minor amendment to the order of conditions to allow this to be installed. <laughs> okay, I'll make that a motion for the minor, uh, minor, minor requirements for the amendment. Second. Oh, uh, I cut you off. It's all right. I'm so excited. <laughs> so Fletcher, your boot. Aye. Anna. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I for me as well. Excellent. We're right. getting close here, aren't we? We are getting Got some close. Um, ah, how do I get out of here? There we go. Um, yeah, so complaints. Um, monitoring reports, there's really nothing um, major to report. Um, I'll just, this is, this is very quick. I'll make it super fast for you guys. Um, there were, I've been following up on a couple complaints here and there. Um, and I just wanted to make you aware of two of them. Um, one of them was a, um, 
a driveway, which is on West Pomeroy Lane. Um, and basically what happened was um, it was observed that they were installing the driveway, putting down uh, a base to pave. And um, there was pretty clearly a um, fragmity wetland um, in the back of the property. And so I contacted them, went out there, took some measurements um, with them. And um, basically what, what we ended up negotiating was that they remove a portion of the driveway and move it back a little bit so that they were outside of 100 feet. And the landowner was totally fine with that. Um, they put in erosion controls, they pulled out the section that was, it was literally like 20 feet within the 100 foot buffer. They pulled out that section and then reseeded it as lawn so that they're um, over 100 feet away. So that was one resolution. Um, and then, okay, so the other one was a complaint about some properties along Pulpit Hill Road. Um, uh, there's a gentleman who owns a property, I believe, on Mill Street, and um, it, it, he owns like a large piece of, um, well, his his residential home, and then there's like a large piece of conservation land that he owns as well that's um, immediately adjacent, abutting his property. And then um, there's a row of homes along Pulpit Hill Road where the the back acreage abuts his little piece of conservation land and his conservation land is is wetlands um and he contacted me because he noticed that a couple trees had been cut up back there um it was really relatively minor from where i from my perspective it looked like there was three dead dead trees that had fallen that somebody had cut up with a chainsaw into um you know, log size uh, pieces that they would use for cordwood. And then there was one tree that appeared to be um, a fresh cut. Um, so it was maybe a total of four or five trees that had been cut and that was spread out amongst, I would say an area maybe 200 feet wide. So it wasn't like a clear cut or somebody was out there doing any major damage. It was, it was, it was pretty minor. Um, <clears throat> nonetheless, the guy was concerned that the abutters were coming down there and cutting land on his, you know, this area that he was keeping in conservation. So I reached out to the three landowners and um, I believe that I determined who, who the person who was doing the cutting was and I've been in touch with them to try to um, encourage them to go about this the right way. If, basically letting them know, hey, if you do any future cutting, you need to file a permit, you need to do a wetland delineation. And um, so anyways, I'm, I'm working that out, but I just wanted to make sure that you got, I, I kept you guys in the loop about it. Um, 99 Pulpit Hill Road was one of the properties that was in, in this row of homes. And you may recall last year, there was an enforcement order on their property because they were doing some clearing out in the back Mm -hmm. on this guy's property, which is part of the reason why he's keeping an eye on things and he was upset. Um, and so I requested a follow-up um, on their enforcement order because they were supposed to be doing a restoration plan in the back. So that's it. I uh, just wanted to give you a quick update on the complaints and how I was following up on them, but I don't think it rises to the occasion of enforcement. Does this happen to be the same person, the same landowner who was encroaching last time, or is it a different person? It's a different neighbor. Okay. Um, yeah, the guy who committed the violation wasn't the one responsible for this. Um, I think it, it was a different individual, and he thought he was on his property, and he was. He said just cutting dead dead trees that were down, and he didn't know that there was anything wrong with that. Which, really, cutting dead tree, cutting up a dead tree that falls over is okay. Um, it's just a question of where the property boundary is and um, whether the tree is live or dead, you know, just to, to make sure that I'm giving, you know, clear guidance to folks, so. Okay, thank you, Erin. You're welcome. I think that's everything. So we're good. I believe that's everything. I think we covered everything. Dave, um, since we missed your update at the beginning, granted, you know, it's about nine, <laughs> 9.30 now, but I'll give you a chance if you, you know, any quick updates that you wanted to provide, Dave, or? Given the late hour, I think I, I won't. I will just 
share this one um, observation. Brad and Tyler were out on Station Road doing some brush hogging today and they encountered a female moose with a calf uh, uh -huh. right near the Hop Brook. Uh, oh was, my God. Yeah, so kind of a cool sighting uh, <laughs> down the trail. I think they were off. Uh, they're going to send some video. So if I get it, I'll send it to Erin and she can distribute it to you all. But <laughs> kind of a cool sighting. I mean, moose are more common, but seeing a, a female with a calf is kind of cool on Station Road. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dave. So with that, unless I hear anything else, looking for a motion to adjourn. Go, Larry. So moved. <laughs> Second. Fletcher? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Larry? Aye. Anna? Aye. And I for me as well. Thank you, everyone. We're good. Bye, good job, Bye. everyone. Enjoy. Bye. Have a safe Bye. Thanksgiving. Thank All you. Right. You too, guys. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. See you guys.